definitely a firm believer in the expression that's a little bit cliche, which is the best camera is the one that you have with you. Hello friends, Michael Shamblum here. I am a professional landscape photographer. And uh, right now there's a lot of exciting camera gear coming out. Sony's putting out A7S III, amazing low light, awesome video capabilities. Canon's putting out a lot of great stuff as well with the R, is it five or six or seven? It's one of those numbers um, or two of those numbers. But uh, here I am and I've actually been taking more images with this. This is a point-and-shoot camera. This is the Sony RX104. Um, I believe there's way newer versions out now. I purchased this a while ago for about $650, $700. This video isn't sponsored by Sony. Purchased it full price for my own work. Um, and the reason I purchased this thing is because I wanted a camera that could fit in my pocket or in a small backpack when I go hiking. Um, this camera shoots 4K video, so it's been great for vlogs. I've been shooting a lot of photography with it. I've been doing some time lapses with it. And it's just something I can throw in my pocket, not have to worry about it. Because when you pack up a camera bag full of like 30 to 40 pounds worth of stuff, at least for me, it kind of tells me, okay, I'd really like to get some great images today. Uh, it makes the main purpose and the goal to get images. And I just wanted to start going on more hikes and more adventures where the purpose wasn't to get great images, it was just to enjoy the experience. But what I found is through these experiences, I would always find really interesting stuff. And I shot some images with my iPhone and they came out fine. I don't have the newest version of, of the iPhone. I have like a few years back, but it works out okay. But I wanted something that was in between a DSLR and a cell phone. And so I found this it has pretty decent dynamic range. I'll show you some images that I captured, but I'll also show you why I probably wouldn't have captured these images without this camera. All right, so here is an image that I shot on the coast of San Francisco during a very, very bleak day. <laughs> it was a really terrible day out, uh, super overcast, a little bit rainy, no light in sight, but I still wanted to go for a nice hike. So I hiked along the coast and then of course, like things do, the sky opened up just enough for the sun to start peeking through. Beautiful colors in the clouds started appearing. So this is actually the raw image um, from the shoot, or let me, there we go. There is the uh, raw image. Um, Here's with the highlights and the shadows. So you can see there's a decent amount of dynamic range here, bringing up and down the highlights. Um, of course, not as much as a DSLR, but enough to really recover these, these shadows and the highlights. I found myself with this camera doing the same thing I do with DSLRs, which is underexposing a little bit. I did find it a little bit easier to recover the shadows than the highlights, which is the same thing I do with the Nikon D850. But, uh, I wouldn't have shot this if I didn't have that camera because I would have just been going on my walk, all of a sudden the sky would have opened up and then I wouldn't have had a camera to really shoot with. And after this, it even got better. <laughs> so I wanted to see if it would be possible to focus stack and exposure blend an image from a point and shoot and uh i did it <laughs> this is a focus stack of about five different um, focus points for the foreground so i'm actually just twisting this focus ring and then i did uh, three exposures for the background with the sky and the sun um, and I did it all handheld. I was able to stitch everything together using Photoshop, using the same techniques that I do with my DSLR images. So I just wanted to see if it was possible and if the images would come out good. And I was really happy with the way this one came out. I shared it on social media. People were asking me about what camera this was shot with and uh, <laughs> they were surprised to learn that it wasn't my D850, it was not my Sony mirrorless, it was this point and shoot. And then that same sunset just kept giving some beautiful stuff. So then I went and I shot this, did a focus stack for this foreground area with the flowers. The background even caught these little people. It was just a gorgeous moment and I wouldn't have captured it without having this camera with me. 
So here's an image I'm really happy with with this camera, and this one's actually a long exposure and an exposure blend. So here I'm doing 1.3 seconds, and I didn't have a tripod with me, so I actually just perched the camera on a little ledge, and I took my long exposures, worked great, the sunset was incredible, and uh, I'll show you the exposures that went into this. So here's an image with some waves and the sun. You can see it's a little overexposed on the horizon. So I took this one right here to get a little bit more darkening to the sky. And then I got two more images for the waves. I really liked this wave right here. That was to the right of the rock. Um, I actually did one more exposure for that boat in the background too. It would have been nice to have a tripod, but found a rock, worked out great. I don't feel uncomfortable walking around San Francisco with a tiny little backpack and a point-and-shoot camera, but as soon as I start bringing the tripod and all the camera gear with me, you put yourself at more of a risk walking around the city, especially San Francisco. There's been a lot of robberies of camera gear. It's been really unfortunate to see, but uh, I, f I felt a little safer just having this point-and-shoot with me. This day, it was pouring all day. I left my house walked towards Twin Peaks, walked up the hill, sat around for a little while, completely overcast, and then all of a sudden the sky opened up, rainbows started appearing behind Market Street, and I'm so glad I had this camera to capture this moment. Um, and I'm really happy with the lighting here. I mean, these were some of the best conditions I've ever seen up there. I've been up there plenty of times, and this is the best light for sure that I've seen up at Twin Peaks. Um, and then I shot this last image right here. The rainbow had already gone, but I was really happy with the lighting here. Love those cotton candy clouds, the soft light on the buildings, the long exposure look. I was actually so happy with this one, I ended up offering it as a print on my website. So these are totally printable, and you can get some good quality images out of them. Landscape photography, cityscape photography, with a uh, point and shoot, totally possible. And uh, if you're in the market for something like a nice camera that you can just fit in your pocket, throw in in a, in a tiny little hiking bag, go out on adventures, um, I recommend getting something like this. You don't have to get this exact one. In fact, this one's a little outdated, um, but I'm sure Canon and Nikon also make similar versions of this camera. It is, it's just so nice to not worry about the lenses and the filters and all this extra stuff and just have something tiny with you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I'll be releasing a bunch of new videos in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.